Hi, I'm Brent with PetToolSupply.com. If you haven't seen our last video, take a couple minutes and watch it. Um, it's, it talks about splitters and basic RF distribution. Uh, some of the things we talk about in this video build upon the last video. Now, uh, splitters and taps are completely different. Um, when, when we talk about taps, we're, they're also referred to as directional couplers. The, the mechanics of the device is completely different than a splitter. The way that a splitter operates, you have the same insertion loss between the input and all of its outputs. For example, if you had a uh, eight-way splitter, you're going to have 11.5 dB loss between its input and all eight of its outputs. Taps are a completely different device. Taps have a very small insertion loss between its input and its output, which is typically uh, negative four to, uh, I'm sorry, in, uh, typically from a half dB to four dB, really depending on what the value of the tap is, and then it has a, a tap port on it. Now the loss on the tap port is normally noted on the front of the tap. For example, if you had a 30 dB tap, it's going to have a 30 on the front of it to let you know that's the loss between its input and its tap port. Now, taps have an input, an output, and a tap port on it. Now, companies do make taps that are two port, four port, eight port. Uh, they make them with pin connectors for hard line, they make them with F connectors, there's a lot of different variations of them, but they all work the same way. Between the in and the out, depending on the value on the front of the tap, uh, the, there's an insertion loss. If we had a 24 dB tap, the insertion loss between the input and the output is only going to be 1 dB. Now, that means if we had 30 dB coming into our input of this tap, the output is going to be 29 dB. Simple addition and subtraction, 30 minus 1 is 29. Now, to calculate the loss on our tap port, we're going to subtract 30, or we're going to subtract 24 from 30, which means our tap port is going to be 6 dB. Now, if this was a, a, a tap that had two ports or four ports or eight ports, each tap is still going to work the same way. Whatever values on the front of that tap, you deduct that from your signal coming into the tap, and that will give you the output of it. Now, when you have multiple taps, let's say our input signal is 30 dB. And let's say that our target level for, uh, for every location we have on here is 7 dB. The best way to calculate what size tap you need is to deduct your, your target value from your input signal. So if we have 30 dB coming in and we want 7 dB on the output, we're going to deduct 7 from 30 and that will give us the, uh, our, target, our uh, target tap value. So 7 from 30 is 23. Uh, unfortunately, they don't make a 23 dB tap value, so you have to go to the closest one. So, in this case, we'll put a 24. 30 minus 24 gives us 6 dB. So, we have 6 dB on the output. Again, to calculate the, uh, the loss between the tap itself, the insertion loss on a 24 dB tap is 1 dB. Um, you would have to look at your manufacturer spec sheet um, when, you're, when you're designing this. You always want to have the manufacturer specifications there because you're constantly going to be coming across uh, questions as far as what insertion loss is this, etc. So if this is 1 dB insertion loss on here, we're going to have 29 dB on the output. Now let's say that between the output of this tap and our next tap, let's say that we have 100 feet of RG6. Now, as we talked about in our previous video, um, at 1,000 megahertz over uh, 100 feet of RG6, your loss is typically right around 6 dB. So let's say we have 6 dB of loss between this tap and our next tap. So that means that our 29 dB coming out of our previous tap, when it, after going through the RG6, going to the next one, we're only going to have 23 dB, or 23 dB of signal going in. We're still shooting for the same 70 dB input on it, so we're going to deduct 7 dB from 23, which means we're going to shoot for a 16 dB tap, which they do make. Um, and that will give us exactly what we want. 23 minus 16 dB would give us our optimum 7 dB output. 
Uh, 16 dB tap, the, the insertion loss is going to change a little bit. On a 16 dB tap, the insertion loss is 2 dB. So now we're going to have an output of here of 21 dB. And now we're on to our next tap. Same thing again. Let's say we have another 100 feet of RG6. So we have 6 dB loss there. So now our signal's down to uh, 15. So the 15 minus 7 is 8. They do make a 8 dB tap, but most times when you when you find an 8 dB tap, it's going to be self-terminating. What that means is there's no output on it. The output on it um, is is self-terminated inside of it. So let's say that in this case, this is the last tap that we have down the line. We could put the 8 dB tap in here and give us our 7 dB signal. Uh, and, and there's, our, and there's our, our small tap system. Three taps, we start with 30 dB. Um, this output is 6 dB, this one's 7, this one's 7. Now let's say this last one here, let's say that we did need to continue on. In this case right here, you would have to add on an amplifier of some sorts. Um, let's say a 30 dB amplifier, you could put a 30 dB amplifier on there and bump your signal back up. So we'll say after the we'll say after this one we have 100 feet of cable, so we have 6 dB of loss there. So our signal's at 15. We'll put a 30 dB amplifier on here. Then we go back up to our tap. So now our signal's back up to 45 dB plenty of signal now. This is, this is, this is the basic, basic calculations for doing ta taps. Just a simple addition and subtraction. Like I said before, if there are multiple outputs on these taps going to multiple TVs, the value, the insertion losses may change, but you know, the, uh, the calculations that we just did figuring out um, what the values are are going to be the same. So uh, I'm Brent with Installation Nuts and Bolts. Thanks for checking us out. We'll see you next time.